What is up you guys, Sam here, and now that said 1.5 is coming out, it's time for some more Elemental Shopping Guide, yay! So if you're not in the loop, there are currently three viable playstyles on 7.15 for Elemental Shaman. I'm going to briefly explain the different playstyles. So first, Ascendance, it's the very bursty, good for single target, good for multi-dotting, pretty good for cleave, a little easier to play playstyle. It's one of the best ones right now, Lightning Rod. Not very good for single target, really good for sustained cleave, and really good for AoE. Very easy to play. And there's Ice Fury, which is technically best for single target. Really good for movement, but very difficult to play. So that's basically the three play styles. In this video, I'll be focusing on Ascendance and the Lightning Rod. I already have a video on my channel about Ice Fury, so if you want to play that one, check that out. But in this video specifically, we'll be talking about Ascendance and Lightning Rod. As usual, if you want to cut to a certain point in the video, there will be a little overlay in the top left part of the screen that will have the four sections of this video on it. Each section will now be going into details on both Ascendance and Lightning Rod. So if you want to skip to one of the sections, go ahead and click up there. So first things first, let's talk about these stat priorities. For Ascendance, the stat priority is Mastery over Crits, way over Haste and Verse. Basically, you want about twice as much mastery as crit, but you do not want to ever go over about 86.5% mastery. Aim for like 85%-ish. If you ever go over that, the, the reason for this cap is that Elemental Blast gives you 2400 mastery sometimes, and if it gives you 2400 mastery and you're over 86.5%, you're going to overcap on mastery, and all that mastery that you got will be entirely useless. Anything over 100% does absolutely nothing. So never go over that amount of mastery, but otherwise you want to be stacking the hell out of mastery. Then crits, and then they're both significantly higher than haste and versatility. For lightning rod, though, the stat priority is actually very similar to uh, ice fury for a single target, which is crit equals mastery, and then both those are significantly over haste and versatility. Seems like a very common trend here is crit mastery, but if you're using lightning rod for AOE, like most people will probably be, probably be doing for dungeons, you want to stack haste over crit. So we recommend that if you take dungeons very seriously, you probably want to hold on to two different gear sets, one stacking haste and crit, one stacking crit and mastery. So now let's talk about the talents. We're going to start with the ascendance build. For the ascendance build, for the first set of talents, you want path to flame in pretty much every situation ever. Then you want Ancestral Swiftness. Elemental Mastery is also a potential option, but Ancestral Swiftness is going to pull ahead in pretty much every situation. For the 75 row, you want Elemental Blast for, like, pure single targets and stuff. El or Primal Elementalist can pull ahead if there's a long period of time where you're unable to get Elemental Blast out. And then Elemental Fusion can pull ahead if there are long periods of time where you can keep more than one Flame Shock going or potentially if there is lots of movement, but that's kind of primal elementalist thing. So Elemental Fusion, you probably want to go with that if you can sustain more than one Flame Shock for a good part of the fight. The 90 row, you definitely want to go with Echo of the Elements pretty much all the time. Liquid Magma Totem could be good if you're doing like dungeons or something, and you want Ascendance Burst on the boss, and you want Liquid Magma Totem for the AoE. And then obviously for the last row, Ascendance is going to be the talent of choice. Now for Lightning Rod, there are couple reasons you could be using Lightning Rod. Maybe you just like Lightning Rod for single target. In that case, you want to go with Totem Mastery, Ancestral Swiftness, Element of Blast, Echo of the Elements, and Lightning Rod. If you're using Lightning Rod for Mythic Plus Dungeons, like most people probably will be doing, you want to go with Totem Mastery, Ancestral Swiftness, Element of Blast, potentially Primal Elementalist, depending if it's like a whole bunch of big packs, anything over a pack of four Elemental Blast is no longer going to, be going to be casted, so you can kind of make your own judgment on that. And then Liquid Magma Totem for the AoE, and then obviously Lightning Rod. Lightning Rod is going to be a really good spec with Liquid Magma Totem for dungeons, so I would suggest trying this build out if you're going to be doing AoE. This build being this one. So now let's talk about the rotations, which is probably the most important thing for any game when it comes to MMORPGs. This rotation, both Ascendance and Lightning Rod, are actually very similar and much easier to do than Ice Fury. It, it starts out with the same thing, you always want a Flame Shock up on the target if you can. You want to have a buffed Flame Shock with Elemental Focus up for the additional Flame Shock damage. 
You can refresh your flame shock anytime under 9 seconds left. So anytime under 10 seconds left, and it will refresh and add that 10 seconds to the end time. Like for example, let's uh... Actually, you know what, it would take way too long to do this. Basically, it adds to the end time if you do it under 10 seconds, that's all you really need to know. Then your next priority is casting Elemental Blast. Then as similar to the Earth, or similar to the Ice Fury rotation, you want to use Earth Shock to make sure you don't overcap on Maelstrom. Anytime over 85 is generally fine. Then you want to Lightning Bolt if Power of the Maelstrom is active and Lob Burst has one or lower charges. So as long as you aren't wasting a Lob Burst cooldown by leaving it up and Power of the Maelstrom is active, you want to be casting Lightning Bolt. Then once again, this next priority is Earth Shock at a lower Maelstrom level. The first one was going to be like a 92 or something that's going to be an emergency, like you're going to cap. Down here, it's more of like a you're sitting at 80 ish, 85 ish, and you want to use it to dump before you do any other actions. So you can dump right there. That's why you got to be careful because sometimes you overcap. Next on the priority is Stormkeeper. If you'll be, if you will be able to use all three charges, which basically saying don't use it during ascendance. That's that's pretty much it. <laughs> it's the only time you wouldn't really be able to use all three charges. Next is Lava Burst, just regular Lava Burst. Make sure you don't ever, or try your best not to sit at over, or sit at two charges for very long, because that's a bit of a waste. You want to use Lava Burst as much as possible. And then after that is just the Lightning Bolt. Just plain old Lightning Bolt. So the Lightning Rod single target rotation is almost identical to that Flame Shock of Sound on the target. Try and keep your Flame Shock buffed with Elemental of Focus. Don't cast Flame Shock under 20 miles from if you can avoid it. Element of Blast, Earth Shock if you are going to overcap on Maelstrom, use Lava Burst, and then Lightning Bolt. It's fairly simple. For AoE though, that's where I'm going to talk about the AoE rotation with Lightning Rod. Ascendant's AoE rotation is basically just uh, keep dots up in multiple targets, and if they're close together, use Chain Lightning instead of Lightning Bolt. That's pretty much the same with uh, Lightning Rod, except for Lightning Rod, we're going to go into a little more detail, like dungeon situations. So for two targets with both Ascendance and Lightning Rod, you're just basically going to do your single target rotation, but you're going to keep Flame Shock buffed on both targets, and you're going to cast, cast Chain Lightning instead of Lightning Bolt if they are close enough together. If you do get a Power of the Maelstrom proc, it is worth casting Lightning Bolt instead of Chain Lightning, otherwise cast Chain Lightning. If there are three targets, you want to use Liquid Magma Totem on cooldown if you can, if you're talented into that. Cast and maintain Flame Shock on all three targets, use Chain Lightning, Lava Burst if you get a proc, but not if you don't get a proc, and then cast Earthquake if you have enough Maelstrom. Do not cast Earth Shock, just Earthquake. If there are four or more targets, Liquid Magma Totem if you have that talented, Chain Lightning and Earthquake, no Flame Shock, no Lava Burst, just Chain Lightning, Earthquake, and Liquid Magma Totem. For both builds, you want to be using your cooldowns as frequently as possible. When it comes to things like Fire Elemental and Ascendance, you want to get as many out as you can. If you are only going to get one more fire elemental out, like let's say the fight is going to end in two minutes and you have a fire elemental elemental off cooldown, you want to save it for your next elemental well you want to save it for your next potion or something, anything you have that counts as cooldown, like if you're spec elemental mastery, use it for that. If you have hero for execute phase, use it for that. If you don't have anything coming up, then just go ahead and use it. But basically you want to stack it with potions and stuff like that. Then Stormkeeper is kind of a unique cooldown that most specs don't really have a cooldown like this, I don't think. But basically, you are it's okay to sacrifice a single target use if you can use it on AoE. Basically, what I'm saying here is you can save it for like 15 seconds to get it on AoE because it benefits AoE significantly more than single target. So if you can save it, then do so. So the Ascendance opener is fairly simple, now that we're talking about openers. You precast Fire Elemental, use your potion, precast Lightning Bolt, and then apply your Flame Shock. Cast Lava Burst twice, Elemental Blast into another Flame Shock just to get it to full duration so you don't have to reapply it during your cooldowns. Then you cast Ascendance and spam Lava Burst. During Ascendance, you do not use Stormkeeper, you do not use Earth Shock, but you do use Elemental Blast that one time. So now that I've explained it, I'm going to show you just to make it a little more real, I guess. So Fire Elemental, Potion. Lightning Bolt, apply your dots, cast your Love Burst twice, I got a proc there, that was convenient. I want the Blast and do Ascendance. I actually did forget to Flame Shock again, that's bad. But uh, now you just spam Lava Burst, 
and it hits way harder than Elemental or Earth Shock would. Elemental Blast comes off cooldown, you're going to use that again. Ideally, I would have Flame Shocked. I don't know why I didn't, but yeah. And then after this, you have Storm Keeper and stuff, and you can use Earth Shock again. Also, ideally, you get a Power of the Millicent proc, but unfortunately, mine fell off before the end of my Ascendance. Now it's just back to the normal rotation until your next Ascendance is up. Main rule is you do not want to ever cast Earth Shock in Ascendance, because Love Burst just hits so hard in Ascendance. The Lightning Rod opener isn't really something that's particularly worth noting. It's basically just precast Fire Ellie, use your potion, precast Element to Blast, play your Flame Shock, and then you just kind of do your normal rotation. That's that's pretty much it. You just do your normal rotation. Lightning Rod doesn't really have doesn't have any extra cooldowns or anything, so you just kind of precast and then do your stuff. So now let's talk about relics. For Ascendants, relics are very important. The Love Imbued and Molten Blast are incredibly high for relics compared to pretty much every other build you could run. Fortunately, they are also the two top relic... Well, at least one of them. It, Love Imbued is the top relic for every talent build you could run right now. So it's not really... you aren't hindering yourself by running that for Ascendants. But just to give you a point of reference, Lava Imbued is over a 1% DPS increase per Relic if you have it. That's not including the extra eye level or anything. So you can actually sacrifice like two eye levels just for a Lava Imbued Relic if you're playing Ascendance. If it's a healing trait, you can even sacrifice maybe even three eye levels as long as you plan to strictly play Ascendance. So yeah, basically it's the two Lava Burst ones, then Call the Thunder, Earth and Attunement, Firestorm. It's the kind of that's the Relic hierarchy for Ascendance. Unfortunately, every spec for Elemental shares that same Relic setup, but there are none of those in Nighthold. There are a, There is a Molten Blast one in Trials of Valor, I do believe, so that one is probably going to be the go-to for that, but otherwise you may just want to go with the higher eye level Nighthold Relics, or you can try and farm Mythic Plus Dungeons and see if you can get a good Lava Beat Relic from like Eye of Ajar or something. But basically, you want to be going for Lava Imbued Relics for every spec. Lightning Rod, in particular, Lava Imbued is not very far about, not very far ahead of Call the Thunder. Molten Blast is just behind Call the Thunder. Earth Entombment is just behind Molten Blast. So anything that isn't Firestorm and Healing Ones is pretty much a viable option. If you are using Lightning Rod and you're like, if you're one of those players that doesn't really want to raid much, they just kind of do strictly Mythic Plus. You can always go with just Call the Thunder can run Lightning Rod all the time, or you can go with the Chain Lightning Relics, because that'll be pretty good too. It kind of depends on what you're doing, but if you're going to be raiding, Lava Imbue is going to be the the number one option for all specs, especially if you want to play more than one spec. So that's about it for the Lightning Rod and Ascendance Guide. Thanks for watching guys. If you want to see the Ice Fury version, it's on my channel, probably link in the description as well. Didn't want to put them in one video, because that'd be like a 30 minute video. But uh, thanks, for watch thanks for watching guys, like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more Elemental Showman content, and I'll see you guys next time.